I think people understand that the Fed is trapped, that they're caught. And uh, they're caught in, in a quandary of death by hyperinflation or death by depression. And when you have asset prices where they are right now uh, and starting to, to shake, you know, Paul Volcker in, in 1980 raised the federal funds rate to 19 and three quarters percent. That's getting serious about inflation. What they're doing is job owning. And I guess we'll see how much the markets can really take. But um, I think people are realizing that and people are buying gold and silver right now, not to get wealthy, but because it is and represents wealth. And in a world of asset prices that are so crazy overvalued, there's nothing on the planet that offers the argument that silver does. Of course, the price action doesn't support it, the manipulation surrounding it, but from a standpoint of utility in industry, where solar panels are, are supposed to double or triple in the next year or two with the same thing with battery powered vehicles and uh, in a digital and green application or world where digital and green applications are expanding. Andy Schechtman stated that there isn't an asset on the planet that compares to silver. Even with everything else inflated beyond reason, silver is still under half of its previous highs. People are buying it because they're afraid. They're seeing inflation and the fragility of their investments. And they're realizing that silver, despite not having shown its full potential, yet might be the best value in the entire investment universe. Schechtman doesn't see anything else that offers this level of value. He also stated that his own asset portfolio is almost entirely in gold and silver, simply because he doesn't see a safer place to put his money. However, it's a tough ride you need strong nerves and conviction. He's been asking, why is silver the most concentrated short position in any commodity traded on Comex? Why is so much effort being put into suppressing it when the fundamentals are so strong? According to Schechtman, part of the issue with silver's performance is the dominance of the dollar, with the government pulling the strings. But he questioned what would happen if the dollar lost its world reserve status. What if Saudi Arabia, which is already negotiating with China to sell oil in Yuan, follows through, just like Nigeria already has? And what if tensions with Russia escalate further? With China's Belt and Road Initiative connecting 80% of the global population and a new trade route between Iran and India, de-dollarization is already underway. When the dollar hegemony finally breaks, Schechtman believes that the manipulation of silver prices on Comex will end. They have been the ones accumulating gold and silver. They have been the ones quietly de-dollarizing. So they, they play along the game. If you can't beat them, join them type of thing uh, until they are able to beat them. And they'll beat them by, I believe, challenging the dollar for singular world reserve status. The Chinese digital yuan has done close to $10 billion in transactions over the last year. With all of these countries coalescing together, Russia, China, India, South Africa, the likelihood, I believe, and these are all the biggest producers of, of gold and silver in the world, the biggest accumulators of it as well. What I believe will happen at some point is that they will challenge the dollar. They will issue a, a gold-backed or a commodity-backed BRICS nation's currency on the back of the success that the Chinese have already had with their Belt Road Initiative and their digital yuan. When something like that happens, when the dollar loses its hegemony, when the dollar loses its ability through sanctions and, and edict and governmental decree to control the markets, that's when it snaps overnight. Now, it's not fun waiting for it. In the end, we'll be proven right. And I think there are very few things on the planet that offer the utility, the necessity, and the scarcity that silver does. In a world of blown up asset prices, it's the most undervalued asset on the planet. So being right sometimes means you're wrong until you're right. And I've experienced that a lot. Yeah, we may not have been right yet, but we will be. In 1974, Henry Kissinger struck a deal with the Saudis to value oil in dollars globally through OPEC. And for that, we would protect the Saudi kingdom. The fact that Russia signed a joint military cooperation agreement with Saudi Arabia the day after we left Afghanistan and the next day did it with Nigeria signals the beginning of the end of things that we've seen in our lifetime. In our lifetime, we've known nothing but dollar hegemony, dollar strength, and the world reserve currency. I would argue those days are coming to an end. And so that's when things change. You know, when people are looking at alternatives, look at every other asset class out there and forget about what I'm saying about the dollar losing its singular petrodollar status, but what happens if the Fed is true to its word? And the house prices start to exponentially decrease and 
the stocks and bonds start to decrease. Gold is near its high despite the interest rate hike. That's that's true. Interest rates and gold are inversely correlated. However, it's real interest rates and the price of gold, the inverse relationship between real interest rates and gold. And I'm just going to focus on gold for one moment. Gold is doing what it's supposed to be doing. But remember, there's a 90% correlation between gold and silver throughout all of history. So if gold leads the way, typically silver will catch up and surpass it in performance. It's a depleted asset. It's massively needed in industry. It's hugely accumulated monetarily. And it's, it's just disappearing. But in the end, mathematics, logic, and economics will prevail. And that's the best we can all do, is, is try to find something that's logical, that meets the test of economics, meets the test of mathematics, meets the test of old school logic. And all of, you could check all three of those boxes. Andy Schechman stated that, in the end, mathematics, logic, and economics will prevail. The best thing we can do is find something logical that meets the tests of economics and mathematics. Gold and silver, according to Schechtman, check all those boxes, but he acknowledges that in today's crazy world, logic and outcomes have sometimes been inversely correlated until they're not, and that, until they're not moment will come, it's just a matter of when. He's been asked why, with all the inflation and craziness, this shift hasn't happened yet. His answer is dollar hegemony. Schechtman believes we are entering a period the Great Reset, or whatever you want to call it where the dollar is teetering. The system built on a mountain of debt simply cannot withstand rising interest rates. It's a choice between death by hyperinflation or death by depression. And in the end, he believes gold and silver will be the last assets standing as everything else seeks fair value in a world where price discovery is nearly impossible. Even in the gold and silver market, he said, we're still a long way from extinguishing inflation. Schechtman stated that he'd rather listen to someone with years of experience starting with a Wharton education and time on Wall Street who talks logically, with sound mathematics and economics. But he claims that the world of finance doesn't make sense anymore. It's all based on easy money and low interest rates that artificially inflated markets to irrational levels. That's what made people feel wealthy allowing them to offshore manufacturing while propping up their 401ks and home values. According to Schechtman, those decisions are having consequences. The world is angry over the US's mismanagement of the currency. Around 85 to 90 percent of the world no longer cares what the US says. He points out that the steps to challenge the dollar are already underway, and when all that money gets dumped if inflation seems bad now, just wait until 90% of the world starts shedding dollars in favor of other currencies. When that happens, Schechtman believes massive inflation and skyrocketing interest rates will follow, with stocks, bonds, real estate, and the dollar all collapsing simultaneously. He refers to this as Klaus Schwab's Great Reset. And he asks, why do you think gold was reclassified as a tier one asset? Why do you think central banks keep purchasing it?